is this is a major legal victory against the Biden-Harris administration on the part of Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty. So let's talk about it. Yeah, um, it is. On Monday, uh, Will secured a significant preliminary ruling um, ordering the Biden-Harris administration to start complying with the Constitution and stop using an affirmative action program to discriminate against our clients based on race and gender. And this affirmative action program, uh, which is known as the Federal Disadvantaged Business Center Price Program, or DBE program, is one of the longest standing and largest affirmative action programs in the country. And how it works is that the federal government, through the Department of Transportation, preferentially assists companies owned by women and certain racial minorities in obtaining contracts for federally financed surface transportation projects. So uh, what are those projects? They're, they're everywhere you go. Of course, there's all of the road construction projects and the various aspects of those projects, like the milling and the hauling and the painting the little lines on the road um, and addressing the surrounding landscape. And then there are all of the projects covering uh, bridge building, tunnels, ferry boats, railroads, uh, airports, public transit, uh, sidewalks, and other pedestrian ways. The list goes on and on. These projects are literally everywhere. Uh, but because uh, the DBE program doles out contracting opportunities like this based on race and gender, businesses like our clients that are not owned by these preferred groups face a considerable competitive disadvantage in their efforts to obtain these federally funded construction contracts. So fortunately, the court's ruling in our favor this week stops this discrimination against our clients in its tracks and reaffirms the basic constitutional guarantee of equality, which prohibits the government from picking favorites based on race and gender. Gosh, I mean, mic drop. Let's all pack up and go home for the day and just not look at the news because I can't imagine anything would spoil this good news. Uh, You know, I (laughs) I guess I, I, I'm, you know, if it weren't for Will, if it weren't for vigilant citizens, we would still be, and, and I guess we, I know this is sort of reminiscent of our conversation earlier this week, but um, if we don't bring this to the attention of, uh, well, of our government and by forcing or by threatening legal action, their behavior is not going to change. And it's really unfortunate that we have to go to such lengths to get them to change their behavior. You know, my question that I believe I asked you earlier this week on a completely different topic, different case, um, how many other, how many other parts of the Biden-Harris administration are actually uh, violating the law? Um, well, they have had, unfortunately, <laughs> this administration has championed its uh, so-called, well, it's, it's their words, racial equity agenda. That's what they call it. Um, and they have done this as, as a cornerstone priority for the last four years. Um, and we've seen a lot of program, race-based programs um, be created anew out of this administration and, and be maintained. Um, there are the various executive orders, which started on day one of of, of the Biden and Harris administration. Um, these orders to federal agencies, instructing them, mandating them to institute uh, racial equity policies, um, which you know trickled down into um, the, the private sphere eventually as uh, private actors start to model these these same policies. Um, there was this massive infrastructure act, which um, this DBE program uh, was a part of in terms of its reauthorization. Um, but th- th- this infrastructure act also created a lot of other new programs. There, there was the Minority Business Development Agency, uh, which will secure a major win on earlier this year. But this was an agency that was devoted entirely to uh, racial discrimination for for certain minority groups um, and singling out businesses of owned by racial minorities for preferential assistance by the federal government. Um, the list sort of uh, goes on and on. Um, and, and for this DB program here in particular, um, it's, it's, it's a historic win in a lot of ways. We're, we're not at the final judgment stage, but this preliminary ruling this week 
does indicate that we are also likely to succeed at the final judgment stage. Um, but it's pretty big because this program has been working this racial and gender-based discrimination for four long decades. And there are four circuit courts across this country that have repeatedly upheld its, con- its constitutional, excuse me, constitutionality up until now. Um, but, but yeah, when I say it's the longest standing and, and one of the lo- longest standing and largest affirmative action programs in the nation, I mean that because it dates back to 1980. Uh, the, even the most current uh, reauthorization under uh, Biden and Harris appropriated uh, more than 37 billion taxpayer funds to fund to, to get this thing going. And um, not only that, but uh, this is a system that works against quality. When you're selecting for race and gender, your your prioritization is not quality. And further. Uh, taxpayers are also funding projects at at higher rates than they would have to, because when you are, again, selecting for race and gender, um, even when there is a bidder out there who is willing to do one of these federally financed road construction projects for less cost, the project will still go to um, a DBE firm that um, is, is meets the quota. So there's there's a lot of problems here all around, um, but our 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 goal is to keep moving forward with this, and we do expect um, the ruling to be expanded nationwide to open um, open these programs that have been sequestered um, by race and gender for so long. Open them up to all businesses. So I have to ask this: uh, so this federal judge that ruled in well, in favor of of this particular case against the Biden Harris administration, did you have to? I, I, you know, I hate to say it this way, but I mean, did you have to shop around to find a judge? Or I mean, because it it so varies uh, depending on which judge you get. Yeah, it can. So our clients, um, the way it worked is you, you kind of uh, can be stuck to a particular venue, depending on uh, where where your plaintiffs are, where your clients are, um, where the defendants in the case are. In this case, um, our clients are construction uh, companies um, in the uh, Kentucky and Indiana regions. Um, one of our clients is, is the Mid-American Milling Company, um, which is a milling company um, based in Kentucky, and they do... Um, Milling is basically the process of removing and, and recycling surfaces of, of paved roads to prepare it for um, repaving. Um, and so they focus on, on those types of construction contracting opportunities. Our other client um, is Bagshaw Trucking Company, uh, which does hauling, um, also based in the same area. So um, the judge that we drew is is was in the in the Kentucky area um, for that reason that our clients are located in that area. And, you know, and I guess me bringing this up just, I, you know, and I guess it's, it's gotta be frustrating. I, I'm learning a lot about the, um, your profession uh, being an attorney and just number one, I've, I've realized often from talking with uh, a number of your, your colleagues and, and yourself that you have to be patient when you're an attorney because, um, the legal system does not move very quickly. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe sometimes it does. But I guess the other part is that you're really at the um, mercy of the judge. And, and you know, I, 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 I don't know. I just I, I, I guess I thought that that they were what, what, what's the term about justice is you, you, you're supposed to be blind when it comes to um, whatever the you know, what, whatever the issue that comes up um, the the judge should be looking at the facts and should be looking at the law and it shouldn't be politicized and and sadly right we find mm-hmm. that that's the case so often and it's it's troubling I mean let's juxtapose I know completely different cases but juxtapose this to what President Donald Trump is enduring with all of these mm-hmm. lawsuits yeah, I mean, unfortunately, these cases can go um, a lot of different ways. And, 
you know, it, just as an example of that, I mentioned four four circuit courts of appeal have previously upheld this program as as exactly opposite. They've said, oh, this is totally constitutional. Um, and, you know, they, they have a, a completely different analysis in, in the way that they 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 get to um, that conclusion. Um, I, I will say, I mean, that analysis is wrong. And I mean, we, we argue back and forth a lot on, on these points in court. But, um, you know, recently the su- Supreme Court has been abundantly clear. And it, it really isn't that um, the Supreme Court came in with, with SFFA a year ago and just like, you know, reestablished uh, equal protection law, you know, for the first time in history. It's that these principles have been um, have applied all along. They've been, they've been, you know, paved going back at least, uh, to the early 1950s. Um, you know, somehow we got off course with that and we, we just kind of need to return to course because a lot of the analysis where courts are saying these pro, these programs in the past have been constitutional for so long, um, they they literally don't make sense. They don't make sense with existing precedent. You can't square them with uh, the courts, uh, the Supreme Court's most recent uh, pronouncements on equal protection law. And it's it's time to just <laughs> adhere to the Constitution and um, treat people equally, regardless of their race. And by the way, that's what um, that's what the majority of people want. Um, we follow a lot of pollings on on questions about, you know, do you support um, the use of race in, you know, various opportunities in various contexts? And there is approximately 70 percent of people across the nation don't support that. So, I mean, this is a this is a constitutional principle. And, you know, it's overwhelmingly what people would like to see anyway. Well, and, and that's, you know, sometimes I, I mean, I. For the logical person, that is very comforting. However, I mean, there's <laughs> there's still those, and and I guess forgive me for being cynical, but if it if it hadn't been for your actions, the actions of your organization, and your your clients um, being their willingness to step forward, um, the Biden Harris administration would continue to get away with it. I mean, we're we we see examples of it. We see, although this is a, a a case that has to do with out of state clients, we see this in Wisconsin. I mean, we see how uh, whether or not. I I mean, I guess I'm I'm not convinced that this is. I, I mean, I certainly hope, and you can tell me, you can as as the the professional, the legal professional in this conversation, you can you can um, correct me. But I I, I guess I'm not convinced that they're not going to try to wrap this program or you know put this divert this program to something else and can you know maybe rename it because they're really good at doing that and and I still conceal from the public and from the legal system that they're doing anything wrong I mean is that cynical or is that I think in this case um so Right now, the ruling applies to our clients, and um, we will be working to extend the, the ruling nationwide in the coming months, and we fully expect that it, it will be. Um, the way that this law works is that it would, with a finding of unconstitutionality, they wouldn't be able to enforce it as it exists. They could pass a new law or something like that. Obviously, that takes a little bit of work to do that. Um, yeah, they can play um, other games and other tricks to try and um, sort of hide the discrimination, if you will. Um, I think, I mean, at bottom, if 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 an if a if an effort is still aimed at um, the consideration of of, of race, uh, the action is still race based. So it's going to be unconstitutional for all of the same reasons. Um, so what I can say is that, you know, we'll have to wait and see how they respond to this. A lot of things could happen in the next couple of months. We could have a different president. Um, 
et cetera. I mean, I think you're, it's absolutely, you're absolutely correct. Your stick is right that um, there are certain politicians in this country that are going to continue to use things like race and gender um, as a weapon to um, manipulate people and divide them in, in the name of um, holding on to their, their political power. Um, but I mean, this is, this is something that we do every day. We will continue to go after these programs. Um, I think there are, as I mentioned, there are a lot of people that do not support these programs already. There are a lot of people that have been discriminated against in um, the wake of some of these destructive policies. Um, the policies are not good for for quality reasons. I mean, this is this is infrastructure. Do we want our our bridges falling down just because we couldn't take the time to select the most qualified bidder um, and that bidder didn't happen to be a, a DBE in a given case? Um, of course not. So anyways, I, I mean, there's a lot of different policy reasons not to do this um, in addition to the fact that it's just wrong. But um, yeah, we'll kind of just have to see how the next few months shake out with with the political landscape, um, you know, how the defendants in this case choose to respond to, to the, to the, to this particular ruling. Of course they could, um, potentially try and appeal that, um, don't know how they'll respond at this point yet. Um, but in any event, we stand ready to, uh, to do this. We've had a lot of success doing this and, um, we're going to continue to have a lot of success doing this. Well, and you know what, forgive again my cynicism, but it, it's, it's, uh, um, well, it, it's because I have seen so many cases that are similar to this. Uh, and I, I don't mean actual literally, literally legal cases, but just, I mean, I think about why, why is it that, and, and, and I think you, you nailed it when you said political power, and that's what Democrats are seeking. They're not altruistic i mean this is oh no they this... don't care about they don't care <laughs> about helping minorities if we were helping minorities this problem would have been solved the, the, the purported problem would have been solved a long time ago right and i mean as it applies to so many different um industries in our country now i mean i think about okay so uh, as you know we talk about that we we use this this term dei diversity equity and inclusion uh, I don't want the most diverse air traffic controller. I want the most uh, qualified air traffic controller. I don't want the most diverse surgeon to perform surgery on me. I want the most qualified surgeon. And then as it applies to our Secret Service, this is this is an, a glaring example. Uh -huh. I, I, I want the most qualified and I would say tallest toughest person protecting <laughs> Donald Trump and and you know it's it, it's so frustrating that that um, and and I think that it's important to make the distinction between elected Democrats and those who elect them and I have to believe I have to hope Kara that uh, the traditional Democrat voters will have have had enough of this as well and are seeing through this and are uh, reasonable and rational to realize that this this is not helping our country. This is, frankly, it's the exact opposite. It's hurting our country. It's dividing us further, and it's not certainly not making us safer or healthier or more prosperous when we have to continue to fight these battles that have to that are so superficial and shallow when it comes right. to well, I'm an. I'm going to give you this opportunity based on how you look on the outside, based on the color of your skin. It's so right. it's so shameful, and and I mean, I, yeah. it's 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 uh, prevalent in in I don't know how many different aspects of our everyday lives. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely been intentionally injected into uh, pretty much every aspect of life. I mean, like just from everyday hiring. I mean, at almost any like business that you go to, I mean, it doesn't even have to be a super large business these days. They will have a um, like a DEI statement, a DEI policy, sometimes a whole DEI office or department um, and, you know, a bunch of people working in that. Like, what do these people get paid to do all day? Just, just sit there and 
think about discrimination and how can they how can they you know implement something new that's discriminatory um all of these things though i mean it's not new and like it, people new dei and they, they they like to frame it like they're doing something new and innovative like discrimination isn't new it's been around since the dawn of time nobody's doing anything new we're doing everything old again um and so, you know, I, I think you're right that, I mean, it's definitely going to be an effort. Like people aren't going to, uh, we do see, I, I will say on the one hand, we do see, um, you know, uh, some um, companies, um, we see some universe in the university, in the school context, we see some schools moving away from um, this trend, you know, voluntarily kind of surveying the legal landscape and saying, you know, not worth it. Um, on the other hand, there are a, a number of groups and, and organizations and institutions that are like, you know, out of our cold dead hands, will you will you pry the, our, these DEI policies? Um, so it, it is going to be a kind of brick by brick d- dismantling for, for some of these. Well, they'll have to be individually challenged. Um, but um, as I said, you know, we'll, we'll keep at it. Um, we're aware of we're we're aware of the issues and um you know we have a lot of experience in doing this and we've had a, a lot of great successes here so we look forward in the coming months um to watching this program um come down the rest of the way and be opened up to all american businesses yeah attention kind of depends on it attention democrats will is yeah. watching you Right. <laughs> I mean, that's ultimately the bottom line or those that wish to those that uh, are attempting to break the law. Well, thank you for joining me, Kara Tolliver. I appreciate it very much and uh, look forward to our next conversation. I'm sure it's right around the corner. Sounds great, Meg. Thanks for having me. Have a great day. Will-law.org is.